What's up everyone? Chris from Duckalope Outdoors coming at you with another video. It's going to be kind of a how-to and review all at the same time. Uh, so just follow along with me. You'll definitely like this one. So the first part we'll be talking about the Canadian Geese V-Board. So essentially this V-Board is made of a, a gearbox and two by twos coming out of it. This is referred to as the gearbox. It's pretty simple to make. You just get two pieces of plywood, get some uh, two, by, or two by two on the back end. Uh, obviously it matches up with your legs. And these fold out and they stop on that two by two. So it'll be sitting in the water like this. Close up, it's really easy. You have an eyelet bolt down here. You can do whatever anchor that you feel will work for you, but this will work for me. It's super easy to work with. You can put different forms, whether if they're all just uh, sitting up or if they're feeding, all made by uh, Big Al Decoys. To make this V-board fairly easy, uh, I use Jeff Coates. If you ever heard anything about Eastern Shore waterfowl hunting, he's out of Maryland. He's the one that inspired me to make these and I got with Big Owls and I thought about using their, their silhouettes. The thing is, is that I got with him and I requested a few with, uh, with no legs, so that way they're trimmed off. I did get a few of those in the box from my last order from him, so I appreciate that Big Owl. Good look. Also got black and whites and colors from him. So to get back to the actual V-board itself, so with all this sandwiched in, this middle leg is stationary, it's not gonna move. The other two are the ones that are moving. So what I use is to screw in each one and uh, you know, I'll make sure that it doesn't come out. If you wanna get more detailed into it, you can drill all the way through, put bolts, stainless steel, use brass screws, all that sort of thing. You wanna rip these in half. So if you have a circular saw or a table saw, you rip it in half. So that way you can put your decoy down into the middle and you screw the end, or you can just screw it to the side of the two by two. Some people do that too, but I like to be versatile. So with Maryland hunting right now and being in the army, I'm stationed all over the place. Once I kill my one goose that Maryland allows me to shoot, I'm gonna swap these out and put my sea duck decoys on them, which I already have other sea ducks with me, but it would just lark, you know, make my spread even larger. So that's the, the V board for the geese. This is the V-board for my ducks. The legs are shorter, being that the decoys aren't as big as the geese, you won't need as long as uh, legs on them. The gearbox is built exactly the same way as the geese. It works exactly the same way as well. And this thing's got some detail in them. Those are also made by Big Al's as well. These are the other decoys that I've made, pretty much out of yard sign. So they're not as durable as the Big Al decoys. These are my buckle heads. This is like my canvas, canvas back, redhead sort of silhouette. We'll see if it works. I'm gonna see if they flare anything this coming season. Uh, I feel like they'll be fine because most sea ducks, they don't really flare it too, you know, too much unless you're out there like waving your arms around. But these should at least get them to buzz by. So that way I can get off the shot. So this next part, I'll show you how I load up my V-boards in the kayak. So if y'all been following me, I've had some new additions come into the garage here. Got the Virginia flag up. Got the turkey I killed and uh, the buck I killed during uh, deer season down in Virginia. All mounted up now. So to get back to the video, this is the Ascend H10. So if you have the H12, it would probably work Pretty much the same exact way because uh, that kayak has the same openings as well. You may be able to hold a little bit more than I can. These are five sets of V-boards, all with geese on them. So I pretty much just laid them up in there. I have another idea. I'll try that in the next clip and tell you if it fails or not on getting that to maybe in that storage a little bit better. These are all the ducks. Those are four sets. And those are the redheads and buffleheads attached to them along with the mallards. 
So you don't want them all leaning on the one side or your kayak's gonna be pretty much leaning, leaning on you. And with these going off the back, I feel like it will be fine. And you can also bungee it down using the eyelets just to hold them down in place if you want to. But I feel like they'll be fine like that. And I'll have enough storage to put you know, my bag here. My gun's gonna fit down in the side. I have my anchor. So, and any other stuff I can have going down the middle in between my legs. So I got more than enough space with me. And I could also take some full bodies too and maybe stuff them up in there. Uh, that way it just opens up the spread a little bit more. So the next part, we're gonna go out to Chesapeake Bay. I live on Aberdeen Proving Ground here in Maryland. So it's pretty close to Haverty Grace. Where I'll be putting in is on APG itself. Uh, it's a little boat ramp we have. I'm gonna put in the kayak there with all the decoys. And I have both my GoPro and my camera set up so that way y'all can, uh, can watch me as I set it up. I'm gonna try to put a time lapse on this video so that way it won't be forever long. It won't be like an hour long video. So you can see all of my frustrations, everything in real time. If you haven't picked up on it yet, these view boards were just made so they're not painted yet so you will have to paint them black to make them work because anything flying over and they see that like that bright yellow that's obviously going to look weird to them they're going to flare they're not even going to come close to you so stay tuned all right so we're all buttoned up out here in chesapeake bay that's haverty grace right up here i'm on aberdeen proving ground i'll go ahead and get out here on the water and start setting it up. All right, we got all the cameras set up now. I'm not going too far offshore, just in case if I do end up flipping out. Um, I'm not having to collect everything back up, flip the kayak back over, blah, blah, blah. So we're just gonna do it here in the shallower part. It's probably about two feet deep where I'm at. So of course you'll need longer lines if you're running running in and deeper to keep everything lined up here all right so the first i'm gonna set up are the ducks here All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hop out since the wind's wanting to push me back into shore. But I mean, you would want to set this thing up while you're anchored. So attach these lines on the bottom. You could have these pre-done too. That just save you some time. We'll walk on out here until I feel like it's a little too deep for me. Alright, now we're going to attempt to do everything else. We're gonna attempt to do everything else while sitting in the kayak. Cause I feel like the ducks, if I have ducks with me, it's gonna be shallower water where I can get out. Um, and out there in Haverty Grace, it's uh, there's a couple spots where it's deep, deep where I hunt, so, and I'll still put out decoys, but uh, either way, we'll make it work. <sighs> All right, so now we're back in with this footage here. We're gonna set up the geese decoys. So all these are behind me. A little bit easier to grab. And if you know how you put these in the kayak, you know which ones to grab first, so that way you're not flipping everything all over the place. Open this thing up. Cross the weight over. We 
doing the line first, getting the line ready. Reaching back behind us. So I do the sides first. Try to do this with a little bit of speed and see how fast I can get them out. Just in case if we are doing this real life. Open her up. Toss the weight over. And we do it. Away from it. Same thing. So what I do with mine is left, right, left, right, back behind me. It's nice having this thicker wood, you know, if it gets bumped and all that sort of stuff, it's not gonna, it's not gonna break it. And doing this can be dangerous. You always gotta watch out for other boats, other hunters. You know, you probably will be doing this at night time. Alright, so now we're done here. So this is where I would anchor up. Don't mind the shoreline. If we're out in deeper water like this is where I would be. So those geese, they look good. Got some ducks. This is a different angle. So what we're going to do next here is we're going to start collecting everything up. I'm going to leave the video running and uh, y'all can see how well this goes. I'm going to stay in the kayak the whole time while collecting all this up. So that way, let's say we're out there we did put in some of the stuff when it was lower tide. Now it's done changed to super high tide on us. We can't get out because it's going to go. The water's going to be over our waders. So y'all can see how this how this works. Of course you can anchor up as you get one, so that way you're not floating off constantly. And put them back in, the same way you got them out. You won't have any troubles. And I did just run one over and uh, put it down on the bottom. But as you see, through the GoPro, it's back float again. All right. That bad boy up in there. Now, as you see through the GoPro, I am standing up. And this thing is still, it's still stable. I mean, if you get rocking on it pretty good, of course you're going to flip it, but it's good enough to reach stuff in the front there you have it all right we're gonna do a follow-up at the house thanks for watching through this whole this whole thing we'll recap on everything and see what i would change because there are a few things i'm gonna bring up you know what what things i'm gonna keep the same so stay tuned so just to recap on the video the things i would change the anchor line of course make it a lot longer for deeper water Unless if I'm hunting in shallower water, then of course I could use the regular decoy lines. Things I'll change is probably how I'm going to secure them down. So I'll probably put a bungee cord. Obviously, I still need to paint them, so that's uh, that's going to be the first change I make. 
uh, once they dry out, probably spray paint both top and, top and bottom. If you have another way to be able to seal the wood, I'm sure there's some, some other sealers out there, uh, just leave it in the comments. I'll probably use that too. Other things I would change, probably anchoring down uh, as I'm throwing out the decoys. So that way I'm not floating all over the place. Things that I like about it, so is it cost effective? Yes, I feel like it is completely cost effective comparing to actual floaters. So if you're throwing out AVNXs or something like that, of course they're like super expensive for like a dozen, I think it's like, or even six, I think it's close to like $100. You can double check, you know, double check me or risk me in the comments on the actual prices of it. For silhouettes, for a dozen of black and whites, you're talking 50, 60 bucks from Big Owls. Uh, same thing with colors, you're probably paying an extra 10 bucks uh, when it comes to, you know, the dozen price. And he has different looks to him. So you can go him like, you know, forward facing, you know, uh, up in the sentry mode. And of course the duck's the same thing. Or you can make them yourself out of yard sign, which my video is down prior to this. Uh, it shows it is not cost effective at all to be able to make your own because you have to go get the yard sign. Uh, you have to cut them all out. You have to paint them, blah, 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 blah. The list goes on and on. So the time put into him, I feel like it's not, it's really not worth it. But, you know, is your time worth that much money? Uh, as for the V boards, I feel like it is cost effective because I feel like if I tried to fit two and a half dozen into this kayak with full bodies, it would not happen. Especially if I can go and I can manipulate the actual V board to sit in the kayak correctly, I could probably fit in more. Uh, would it be safe? Probably not. Could I do it? Yes. Will I do it? Probably not. Especially because I hunt by myself more times than not if I'm not down in Virginia with Justin and, uh, and Brian. So as for the V boards, I'm going to stick with them. This is what I'm going to be using this coming waterfowl season. I'll probably bring out some full bodies with me just to mix them in. Also have the Mojo Flock of Flickers or Flicker Flockers. So I'll probably mix that in too when I'm hunting sea ducks because it does catch their attention. Enough for them to come in and buzz you and you be able to get off the, get off the shot. But this is going to be the actual spread I hunt over. I'll have geese and then I'll have ducks and once I shoot uh, one goose then I'll swap out um, a hand tool with me just to unscrew that screw and swap out decoys, put in ducks, so that way I have even a bigger uh, duck spread. But I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you have any oh, comments okay. or questions or anything like that, just leave them down in the comments. Uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up, share. Uh, not a lot of people know about V-boards and uh, you know how to use them or know that they even exist. It's an old style way of waterfowl hunting, especially if you're into you know the Eastern shore, they're big on them. Pitbulls, waterfowl. I hope y'all have fun. Stay safe out there, and, and I hope y'all enjoyed the video.